Internet, what's going on? Scott from Player Court. Today I'm going to give you some quick value and answer a question that I think a lot of us really have just never had great coaching on. And that question is, where am I supposed to stand throughout the point? How close to the baseline, how far away from the baseline do I need to be? And this really, it's not talked about a whole lot and it can cause a lot of problems if you don't understand where to be. So I want to talk about what happens if you're too far back behind the baseline. I want to talk about what happens if you're too close to the baseline and give you a very clear guide of where you should be throughout the point to make sure you're in position to have the most effective results. So let's talk first about what happens when we overcrowd the baseline. And I think a lot of us are coached, particularly as we get to that 3 5 4 level, to start experimenting with hitting more balls on the rise and playing more aggressive. And a lot of times this gets misinterpreted to the, the concept that we should be toes right up on the baseline, trying to take everything on the rise, and we're just overcrowding. And what happens is we don't have any time to react to the ball. Balls that are hit deep, we end up hitting off our back foot. We're not able to get our feet set. We're not able to really stabilize and get the key pieces of our stroke in motion because we're just so rushed. We're too close to the baseline. So don't interpret the coaching of hitting on the rise to mean that you have to stand right up on the baseline. That's not at all accurate. When you're watching the Pro Tour, I know this is gonna be a little confusing, so you're gonna see guys like Feder, no, no longer RIP, favorite player of all time, but you'll see these guys on tour maybe within a foot of the baseline because they're so quick and they're so capable of reacting and taking the ball on the rise, but even the best of the best players are never toes up on the baseline. So this is a huge mistake that I know a lot of rec players make. Let's talk about the opposite and then we'll move into what the correct positioning looks like. The opposite mistake of overcrowding the baseline would be playing way off of the baseline. And honestly, Team and Zverev in the 2020 US Open Finals, I think made a lot of players think this is okay. The opposite of crowding the baseline is obviously playing way, 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 way too far off the baseline. And this creates a whole new set of problems. You, you would do this because you think, okay, I've got a lot of time. I've got time to set my feet, I can react to the ball, but you forget about the dynamics of the court and how much damage can be done with angles out wide. And the further back you go, the easier it is to beat you with an angle. They don't even have to hit the short dipper out wide anymore. They're just starting to hit cross court ground strokes that are pulling you way off the court. Now all of a sudden you're always gonna end up out of position. So playing way behind the baseline, while it might make sense returning some big serves, throughout the point is not something you want to get in the habit of. So we've talked now about the two incorrect ways to do this. We know we don't want our toes up on the baseline. We know, we know we don't want to be five, six, seven feet off the baseline because we realize we're not going to cover these angles. So what is the correct positioning? Obviously it's somewhere in the middle. What I want to give you guys here is just a prescription in exact measurement of where you should be and that measurement is about three and a half feet off the baseline in your rally balls and I'm going to tell you why. Three and a half feet off the baseline about let's say about right here throughout the point gives you the best of both worlds. It allows you to move forward quickly to cut off angles when your opponents hit the ball cross court. It also allows you to take the ball on the rise before it gets up too high whereas if you were standing back on the baseline you'd be waiting for that ball to then descend. So at the right opportunity from this position, you can take the ball on the rise and attack. You can move forward to cover your angles. And it's just an overall more stable position to control the point from. Now don't get me wrong, when you've done damage and you know a short reply is going to be coming, you are going to inch closer to the baseline because you know a shorter ball is coming. But when you're in a rally and you're not completely sure of what's coming back, deep balls could come in and push you off the baseline. You've got to hold this three and a half four feet positioning off the baseline to ensure you've got time to react and that you're in the proper position to both take the ball on the rise or move forward and cut off the angles. Simple but hopefully impactful instruction for you guys today. That's all I've got. Try this when you get out on the court and you're hitting with practice partners. Really focus on that distance from the baseline. And if you need more practice partners, lucky for you, that's exactly what we do at Player Court. So be sure and check out our community to find local practice partners in your area. We'll see you guys next time.